Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and welcome back to my desk for the fourth part of our Reactic Logic series. Reactic. Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and welcome back to my desk for the fourth part of our Reactor Logic series. In this part, we're going to be talking about relays, but real quick, I want to recap on the three keys of the reactor, okay? Um, to start with, you'll remember we had inputs. We talked about inputs in part two of this series and how inputs are used to trigger the reactor and trigger events and relays and all kinds of things like that. In part three, we covered events such as timers, rotations, and how they interact with reactor logic as well. In this third part, we're going to be talking about relays, also known as output. Now this is basically going to be a comprehensive uh, video on how to use low-level relay logic to, to make things happen, how an actual relay works, and the hardware and connection of the relays on our board. So let's get started with it. Now first of all, let's talk about our relays. We offer solid state and mechanical relays. I'm not going to cover solid state relays here, but know that solid state relays we offer are only for AC switching and they are load dependent. You cannot just generate a contact closure with a solid state relay. You must be switching a load like a light that's at least 0.6 amps. So know that about our solid state relays. Now as far as our mechanical relays are concerned, we basically have two different types of mechanical relays that we're releasing right now. That is SPST relays. The SPST relay that we offer is a 30 amp relay. This is the largest mechanical relay we offer and it's only available as a single pole, single throw relay. Okay. Some other relays we offer are 5, 10, and 20 amp mechanical relays. These relays are SPDT, okay, meaning single pull, double throw, which means they have one input and two outputs. Um, let's look at this real quick. With a single pull, single throw relay, you have a common, which is where uh, that's your input into the relay. And then you have a normally open. Whenever the relay is energized, the common connects to the normally open. The normally open is your output. Uh, it's where you would hook your device to it like a light. Um, your common is where you would hook the power for the light. So whenever the relay comes on, the common connects to the normally open and feeds light in, or power into the light. When the relay is off, the common and normally open are disconnected, so the light goes off because there's no power fed to it. Now, a single pull double throw relay basically works the same way. However, a single pull double throw relay has one input and two outputs. Your input is still the common. You still have the normally open output, but now you also have the normally closed output. When the relay is off or de-energized, the common is connected to the normally closed. By default, if the relay is off, um, if I had my power fed into the common, I would have power on the normally closed pin of the relay. Now if I turn the relay on, the common is going to connect to the normally open. There's an actual actuator arm in there that moves back and forth between these two and that's moved back and forth by an electromagnet. So that is basically how um, a relay works. For more on that, we have, um, we have a little video which is uh, uh, about relays and we also have an article about introduction to computer control relays on our website also. And another useful resource that we just came out with is our reactor or our relay logic samples. If you go to our website and type in relay logic into the search box, 
you'll get a link and that link will take you to some samples of how to wire up low level relay logic where you actually use relays in conjunction with each other to make something happen. So let's go ahead and talk about that low level relay logic. This is something that you may use with the reactor to get something done that normally you couldn't. Um, one of our applications that we did was a, a light that is controlled by a light sensor and a button. Now only whenever the light sensor and the button are tripped will the light come on. So if it's light outside and you flip the switch, the light won't come on. If it's dark out and you flip the switch on, the light will come on. So um, that's kind of a fun little setup and, and it actually saves energy. So it'll actually cut your utility bill. So why not do it? Everyone who wants to go green, that'd be a perfect way to do it. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Now, like I said, we did an application on this, which means we have a whole page that has a video that shows you how to wire it up. It has a little text description of what it is. It has some pictures that shows you the board wired up. Um, there's a schematic on there. Um, there's the actual configuration file that you need to load into your controller. Everything you can possibly need to make this happen. In fact, you wouldn't have even had to, to have watched all of these videos to do it. But since you have watched these videos, you understand what's going on. So, but with that application page, any monkey can do it. I mean, it's, it's really easy to set up. So uh, be sure and look into that. But I'll show you kind of how that worked and how low level relay logic is used. Okay, now we're gonna use two relays and two inputs to make this happen, okay? So let's go ahead and draw up our relays. I used single pull double throw relays. You don't have to, a single pull single throw would work just fine as well. But we're gonna use a single pull double throw. So I have my common, my normally open, and my normally closed. On my first relay, this is relay one. On relay two, I have the same thing. Normally open, common, and a normally closed. Okay? I didn't use the normally closed pin on this for anything. All right? And to see which connection on your board is the normally closed and normally open and the common, if you have a relay controller with uh, small relays like this, it's actually labeled in between the relay and the connector. If you look right in here, you look in there and you can see which one of these screw terminals is what for each relay. So on this particular board, there are three screw terminals per each relay, a common, a normally open, and a normally closed. On the larger relays, the 20 and 30 amp relays, you actually make your connection into the top of the relay. And uh, it's labeled on there as well to tell you which is which. So that's that. Now, we've got our relays here, relay one and relay two. Now I'm also going to use two inputs. I'm going to use AD input one and AD input two, okay? And a ground connection. So let's draw up our inputs down here. I've got my ground connection there. I've got AD one. And then I've got AD2. Okay. Now I'm going to be using a light sensor. The way this light sensor works is whenever it gets dark out, it generates a contact closure. Okay. So here's my light sensor, and I'll just label it LS for light sensor. And it has two lines that come out. Remember, when it gets dark out, a contact closure is generated across these two wires, which means they just touch together, basically. So I'm going to attach one of those wires to my ground, the other one to my AD1 input. So my reactor can now tell if it's light or dark outside just by wiring this up. So that's all I need for that. I'm also going to use a button. My button also has two wires that come out of it, and whenever I push the button, a contact closure is generated. 
So I'm going to attach one of its wires to ground and I'm going to attach the other one to AD input 2. Okay, so now we have our button and our light sensor attached to our reactor. Now we need a AC power source. Okay, and we'll just draw that up right here. Don't make fun of my artistic abilities. <laughs> and we have our light bulb. Okay, now I'm going to take my power source and I'm going to attach the power leg of it directly to my light bulb. I'm going to take the other leg of this power source and attach it to the common of relay 1. So relay 1 has power being fed into it. Okay. Now I'm going to take the normally open of relay 2 and I'm going to attach that to the other pin of my light bulb. And now I'm going to attach the common of relay 2 to the normally open of relay 1. Now I want you to look at exactly how this works. The power from my power source goes to the common or the input of relay 1. When relay 1 is turned on, that power is transferred to the normal, normally open leg, which is connected to the common of relay 2. Okay. Whenever the second relay is switched on, that power comes out of it into the light bulb, basically completing the circuit and turning my light on, which is what we're wanting to do here. But the way that this works is the light sensor controls relay one. Relay one's not going to come on unless it's dark out. And if relay one's not on, relay two doesn't have an AC power source fed into it to feed the light. So when relay 1 comes on, as controlled by the light sensor, it connects power to relay 2. So I have my AC power at relay 2 now. Relay 2 is controlled directly by AD input 2, which is controlled by my button. So this input controls this relay. So if I push this button, this relay is going to come on feeding power into my light and turning it on. But remember, if relay 1's not on, turning relay 2 doesn't do anything because I don't have any power fed into it. So it has to be dark out and the button has to come on for the light to come on. So this is really complicated because I drew it up here, but if you look at that application page, this is a really fun one to play with. The button and the light sensor don't hardly cost anything, and this is a fun little application that you can set up to use in your own home to really actually do something with your reactor controller that will actually save you money. So I thought it was fun. I've got it wired up at my house, and it works great. So that is an example of using low-level relay logic. We used two relays connected to each other to accomplish something that otherwise we wouldn't have been able to do. Without connecting those relays together, that whole scenario is impossible. So we actually did something with low-level relay logic that couldn't be done before. So I want you to keep that in mind. If you can't figure out how to use the inputs and the events to make something happen, always remember that you can wire relays together to make something like this happen. And it's really easy to do. You just wire up a couple jumpers across these relays and these inputs. We even have a little jumper pack that's perfect for uh, wiring up these boards for doing things like this. Um, that's also offered on that application page I mentioned. It's going to have the wire jumpers, the button, the light sensor, the controllers that you can use, everything. So be sure and check that out. Um, and I think that this pretty well gives you an idea of what the relays um, pertain to with the reactor and key fob controllers. Um, you've got an idea of what reactor or relay logic is. And as I said, be sure and search relay logic on our site and there'll be a little link there to kind of show you um, some samples of wiring some things up. So that should be a lot of the resources that you need and then you can get into those applications. Now in the next video, we're going to explain how to use the configuration utility to load configurations into your controller 
and how to modify them. And that's going to be a little bit in depth and by the end of it you're really going to know how that configuration utility works. But you understand reactor logic now so you're going to understand what I talk about in that video now. So I think that we're ready to move on to that step and after that you're good to go. You're ready to really do something. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that next video.